Hello, welcome to everything you need to know about our tech and trade programs. Our agenda today, why choose a tech and trades career, job outlook, and courses we offer. I'm Anne Marie Mahoney. I'm a computer science instructor here at Penn Foster. I've been here for oh, about 33 years. This was my, actually my first real job out of college. I started out to be a programmer and I was offered a position in the education department instead. And I just love it. I've seen a lot of changes here. We started out basically not computer focused. We had actual rotary phones at one point, if everybody remembers what a rotary phone is. And we had written exams. Then we went to scanner cards. You filled in the bubbles and sent them in and we scanned them. And now basically almost everything is online here. Hi, I'm Bill Gallagher. I'm a tech and trades instructor here at Penn Foster. I've been here for uh, about 24 years now. I have a background in uh, electrical engineering and broadcast engineering. I've done a lot of uh, heavy uh, mechanical work. I, when I was going to school, I was supervising restaurants and uh, that company was very careful to uh, have me trained in many different trades. So I'm uh, skilled across a number of trades. Uh, of course, we do have uh, skilled instructors in all of our trades. Um, I'm just lucky enough to be able to work across uh, more than one. And uh, I'll be uh, telling you a little bit uh, about some of our trades programs today. The question is, why do you want to do training in the tech and trades area? And why is it so appealing? Of course, there's just the education for the sake of education, but the United States population is aging and, and I believe the birth rate is also falling. The baby boomers are retiring. There's a lot of us out there. The baby boomers, as a matter of fact, they hold a large majority of the skilled trades and tech positions. I was looking up some figures. 62% of those jobs are held by baby boomers. Now, an estimated 31 million, that's a huge number, of these positions will be left vacant by 2020, and that's what, two years away, due to our retirements, and it's really creeping up really, really fast. So how many jobs don't have some aspect of technology? Let's see, um, even looking at the fast food places, when you go into McDonald's, the orders are now on touch screens. In retail, like the auto parts industry, you go in and you say, I need oh, window wipers for my 2009 Chevy truck. And what does the man do? He doesn't go in the back and look it up. He looks it up on the, the computer. Scheduling at the doctors, we've all experienced that. Even at the repair shop, everything is computerized. Why are there shortages for the available people for tech and trade? Less attention to the shop track in high school. Back in the Stone Age, these there were tracks in school. There was the college, the general, and the shop track. In the shop track, the guys learned auto, carpentry, machinist. The trade that trade track has gone away mostly. Some of it's coming back a little bit now. I think our governor is trying to bring that back, which is great, but it just isn't there as it was. And then there's that attitude. And I've actually heard adults in my life say this to their children. I don't want you to work with your hands. I want you to have a nice desk job. Put down that wrench. I want you to be a lawyer. And once again, every job has some aspect of technology. And as Bill, when he introduced himself, we're both in the tech and trades area, but everyone in our company has a computer at his or her station and uses it. When you talk to us or you email us, everybody interacts with you with, your, with their computer. And once again, we have to keep in mind that stuff still breaks 
and stuff still needs to be built and maintained. At Penn Foster, we have courses to provide the training to help fill that gap. Some of the tech courses that I'm involved in is Microsoft Office. Now this course covers the use of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and also how to integrate the three functions. Once again, I would be hard pressed to think of a position involving technology that would not ask you to use a suite such as MS Office in some way. This PowerPoint presentation, excuse me, this seminar is built on a PowerPoint presentation. And all those mass mailings you get, that annoying junk mail, that's integrating an access list, which is Microsoft Office and a template letter. Our course is available for you with, with or without the software. It is based on the Microsoft platform. When we developed the course, one of the things we tried to do was to tailor it to real world. So when you're looking at the exercises in this course, we have ex exercises built on, um, let's say, a health company or your soccer mom. So we tried to make it real world. We found that that was much better with the students, that they, they saw the purpose in the course. Computer programming languages. How to develop the logic for and how to write programs. We also introduce in this course the databases using Microsoft Accesses, Access. Excuse me. Textbooks are included in this course, Introduction to Programming, Java, and Visual Basic. Of course, there are our programs, excuse me, possessions, positions available for programmers. But just having a background in programming is also useful in the, I wonder if IT can develop a solution for me situations. Behind, behind all of those apps on your phone and all those games and all those forms you interact with are lines and lines and lines of code. You may never need to be a programmer, but once again, having an idea of what can be done or not and how much time and effort has to go into building an app, makes for a much better interaction with your programming group and your IT group. PC maintenance and repair. Just how many offices or households do you know that don't rely on computers? Someone has to be able to provide support and maintenance for all of those devices. Topics covered include hardware, software, the operating systems, troubleshooting, and networking. Most of our technology is sadly throw away, but it doesn't have to be. Recently, my poor laptop at home started giving me an error message that it was running a little too hot. So should I throw it out? Should I take it to Best Buy or one of the other shops in the area and get it fixed? Mm, no. What I tried to do and it was actually successful. So I got a can of hot air, excuse me, <laughs> a can of canned air, and I blew some dust out of the fan. And lo and behold, my laptop works. That saves me hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So far, so good. We're keeping our fingers crossed on that laptop. Computer support technician. It's a fuller version of the PC maintenance and repair course. Topics included in that, hardware, software, operating systems, troubleshooting and networking. MS Office is also included in this part, in this program because customer service. Customer service is a really important aspect of having your own business and, work, or, and or working for someone else. Without customers, you don't have a business. Also consider that virtually every business from medium size on up as in-house technical support for their PCs. Simply can't throw a computer away every time it stops working. Many times they're simple problems, but you need to have the knowledge, you need to have the education to know where to look, what to look for, and how to fix it. There are thousands and thousands of computer support technician jobs that go begging because there simply aren't trained people available for them. Excellent point. I mean, how many guys do we have in our company that we depend on. There's a whole crew of them. 
web page design. Yes, there are companies out there through which you can create a website for your company. But it's basically a template. So your creativity is limited and you are dependent on someone else for maintenance and security. In this course, using Dreamweaver, Dreamweaver software, you'll learn how to build your own websites. Equally important, HTML coding is included. HTML coding is the background of what you see. Knowing that coding will help you decipher those strange error messages that pop up. And the course also covers a little bit of uh, JavaScript, um, not, not a heavy amount of JavaScript, but enough to get you started in the language to find out how very valuable that can be, especially for the uh, scheduled applications on your computer and on your web pages. Uh, everything is based on timing on uh, an interactive web page. And we also cover CSS in pretty great detail. CSS, uh, CSS is the background language that uh, tells your browser, tells your computer uh, how to display a page. In the old days, when you designed a web page, every page had to be duplicated if you wanted the same look and feel across a website. Today, we can use what's known as CSS, which are cascading style sheets, and we can create a look and feel for an entire company that applies to absolutely every page that the company uses. CSS also allows you to adapt on the fly to the type of machine that you're using. You may be watching on a computer, you may be watching on a tablet, you may be watching on a telephone. The uh, program can figure out what you're looking at and modify the website or even open up a different web page entirely based on the device that you're using. Very, very powerful language takes a little bit of practice to learn how to use it, integrating seamlessly with HTML. Uh, and also, the course uses uh, the um, latest uh, Dreamweaver uh, software, uh, which is extremely powerful uh, development software. A lot of people like to develop their own web pages. But if you're working for a company, you have to create a lot of pages. You have to create them on the fly. And sometimes it's not a bad idea to know how to use one of the industry standards. Forensic Computer Examiner. Is there a day that goes by without the news of some computer-based crime? This course shows you how to investigate tech crimes, gather evidence, and report your findings. Topics include, of course, PC hardware and maintenance, computer-based crimes, ethics, business writing, and computer forensics. The textbook included in this course is a fascinating introduction to using software tools to detect and document crimes. This course is not for the faint of heart. It's really, really, really project intensive, but we need people out there to do help us with these computer-based crimes. Um, we are so trusting. You know, you hear about um, identity theft and so forth, and it's this. It is a very interesting field, but it is very heavy into projects. Before I introduce, I turn over to Bill. Um, did you ever do radio, Bill? Yes, I certainly did. Okay. I have a background in both broadcasting and uh, uh, sound reinforcement with uh, professional touring. It shows in, in your voice. You have a, one of those radio voices. Okay, please take over. Okay. Um, we have a large number of trace courses. I'm only going to spend a few minutes on each of them. Um, but again, Going back to those original numbers, uh, of course, being a techie, I'm, I'm a little more uh, numbers oriented. Uh, right now, 53% of the working population is age 45 and up. 20% uh, are between ages 55 and 64. The biggest problem we have right now, especially with the lack of the vocational technical training, because one of the first things that uh, school districts cut after music is vocational technical mm -hmm. training, where every five uh, technicians and tradesmen that are retiring. Right now, only one is replacing them. Very often on television lately, you've heard that there are more jobs than there are potential employers. The issue being that many of these jobs, literally millions of these jobs, are technical and trades programs and fields where there simply aren't enough trained individuals. Um, in many, many cases, you will enter a field as an apprentice. Uh, and you'll work under the experienced folks that are out there. 
Um, it's going to become a little more difficult as there are fewer experienced um, technicians and tradesmen that are out there. Uh, but you have to have the basic knowledge to be able to learn what they're actually showing you. Uh, very, uh, very important, especially in, uh, in the large trades. Uh, when you're dealing with electricity, you're dealing with HVAC, you're dealing with uh, 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 carpentry. There are uh, things out there that you need to know before you start working on this. Not like the old days where you were eight years old and you tagged along with dad. And uh, by the time you were 17 or 18, you were ready to go. Uh, and it's also going back to our technical aspect. All of these trades have tech in them now. Um, an electrician doesn't simply install wires in the wall and they're done. Uh, many homes are computer controlled. Uh, many different devices, communications wire, uh, they have to be run. Um, and you need to be able to run these devices and set these devices up in specific fashion so that they don't interact with each other in ways that aren't intended. Um, you don't want somebody to hurt themselves because they plug their computer into a network, for example. At any rate, as we look at our, our trades courses quickly at a, on an individual level, uh, one of our popular programs is a residential electrician program. Now, keep in mind that this is knowledge-based. It does not provide the license for you. This is knowledge. It's education. Uh, your licensing is generally handled on a state or local basis. Again, normally you're going to start off as an apprentice. You're going to work there for, uh, it could be as little as 2,000 hours, maybe as many as 8,000 hours, which sounds like a lot of hours, but it's really only a few years under an experienced electrician. But there are a lot of things to learn as an electrician. Our course teaches you well beyond the journeyman's level. You will learn about wiring, you will learn about conduit, how to calculate wire sizes, how to do uh, conduit bends. Conduit is the uh, piping that uh, electrical wires are run through. Um, the course has a large uh, component that is concerned with the National Electrical Code. When you sit to take a journeyman's examination, when you're ready to go out and work on your own and start training other people, uh, you will need to have that uh, knowledge of the National Electrical Code. And it's very important. The Electrical Code is well over 100 years old now. It's updated approximately every three years. We do update it uh, here. So you're working with the most recent code, although the exam you take may be a code or two before. Uh, if you know how the current code works, you know how the older or earlier version of the code works. Um, but it is a very thorough, um, uh, very thorough um, grounding in the uh, National Electrical Code, very uh, thorough examination on that as well. Difficult course, not an impossible course. We're here to help you out. You can contact us by uh, email, you can contact us on chat, you can give us a phone call, we're here to help out. And we all have experience in those fields. I just have a question about Certainly. the National Electrical Code. Is like when we watch these shows, um, flip or flop, and they have to bring a house up to code. Is that the references to the National? That's Electrical? the references to the National Electrical Code. Most jurisdictions, most cities, towns, counties in uh, the United States and Canada, Canada, and indeed most of the world, uh, have um, used the American National Electrical Code. Uh, or the uh, the similar British Guilds and Trades codes to uh, establish safety uh, regulations for electrical wiring in any type of installation, not just household installations or commercial installations, businesses, restaurants. Um, and there's, there are little things that are out there in, in the electrical field that are waiting to bite you. And um, we want to prevent those those things from happening. As an electrician, it's your job to make sure that they can't happen. Our HVACR technician, that's heating, ventilating, air conditioning, and refrigeration technician course. Very thorough program, uses the industry standard textbooks, understand in this particular course, although much of the material is presented online, you will be provided with a very large, uh, very thorough textbook, which you will cover in great detail, broken down into bite-sized pieces, so it's, it's comfortable to work with. That textbook is yours. You keep that. Uh, it's nice to be able to refer back to that. Uh, these days, there is air conditioning everywhere. Uh, it's in cars. It's in houses. 
Um, there is also refrigeration. Now we're not teaching you specifically a household refrigerator, for example, we're going to teach you industrial refrigeration, uh, including what are known as absorption systems, which are on the large warehouses. There are a lot of jobs in the large warehouses, your Walmarts, for example. Uh, if you've ever seen one of their frozen foods warehouses, uh, some of these some of these plants, some of these uh, factories are not factories, but warehouses can cover a square mile and have hundreds of air conditioning units on them. They have teams of HVACR techs keeping that equipment working. Well, you'll know how that equipment works. Uh, one of the other things we do in this program is uh, we do uh, teach you the EPA regulations as the Environmental Protection Protection Agency regulations on handling gas. Uh, at the end of the program, when you've completed, um, we provide you with some additional training material for that, and um, we also um, provide a voucher for you to take uh, an EPA examination because you need a federal license to be able to handle refrigerating gases. Our carpenter program uh, covers the basics literally from the lumber uh, on up to finished carpentry. Uh, it also uses a textbook component, uh, very thorough program. Uh, there are a lot of things that go into carpentry that you simply wouldn't think of. Um, you talk about uh, you know, measuring board feet. Well, you look at a room, well, how many boards do I need to do this? Um, and there are a lot of factors that go into that. If you look at a, you know, you look at a, a, a building, you're laying out a building, there are places where you have to have additional, uh, they, they're called studs, those are the vertical uh, pieces of wood that are used for framing in the corners. Framing has got to be done in a specific order and specific sizes. Um, so when you go to, or when the next tradesman comes in to build what he's building, everything is where it's supposed to be and everything that he has to install goes where it's supposed to be. Um, and again, we will take you through uh, understanding that, the differences in um, techniques throughout the, uh, throughout the country, different areas of the country require uh, different techniques. Uh, climate has a lot to do with how your wood behaves. You'll learn those behaviors. Uh, you'll learn roofing and framing. Again, uh, you will learn stairs. And there is uh, some finished carpentry involved in the, uh, in the program as well. Our plumbing program, again, very similar to the electrician program. Uh, there is a lot of information in the course. Plumbing, again, second most important thing in your home. Uh, and if it isn't working, it's the most important thing in your home. <laughs> uh, there are uh, specific regulations, uh, specific sizes and locations for pipes. Um, there are what are known as vent stacks because your plumbing doesn't just dump into the drain. Um, your plumbing system has to be able to breathe. Uh, and the devices themselves, a sink, a, uh, a toilet or commode, uh, there are design elements in there that you have to be aware of. And um, this course does go uh, very thoroughly into that. Again, we do cover the uh, national codes, plumbers have a code, as well as, uh, as, well as the other industries. Uh, Again, very thorough course. It covers most of uh, most of what you'll need to get out and actually get working in the field. Again, in most cases, you're going to work as an apprentice uh, or as uh, start off as a plumber's helper as you move into this. But the more knowledge you have going into that, the faster you will be able to move up in that field. Now, the next course sounds like something you'd want to take just for yourself. That's home remodeling and repair. Uh, many of you that own your own homes or you know living in your own homes uh, do a lot of your own basic repairs, but there are many people that can't do those basic repairs. They need to bring somebody else in. So you may want to uh, save a little money. Again, Anne Marie talked about uh, you know flipping your house, uh, and you see how many different skills that are needed for that. Uh, the home remodeling um, will go into uh, earlier. Uh, models or earlier styles of construction fairly thoroughly. Uh, once you know how it's actually built, you'll have a better idea of how to be able to get in there and repair if there's an issue or improve. Uh, of course,
course, normally you're going to want to add uh, updated wiring and uh, that dreaded bringing everything up to code. So this leads to, um, uh, I, I don't, I hesitate to use the word handyman, but um, in, the, in the home repair field, there has to be a jack of all trades. This program is the program that will walk you into that jack of all trades area. Um, there are jobs, uh, again, that go begging. Uh, in this particular industry, in many cases, again, you'll work for somebody for a while, Licensing may be a little bit different than the contractor licensing naturally. There may be some examination, but this is a field where you can actually get out there and run your own business handily, uh, fairly quickly. Uh, the course will cover uh, wall repairs. Uh, it will cover uh, cabinet construction. It will cover uh, basic electrical repairs. It covers uh, basic plumbing repairs. It will cover roofing repairs, siding repair. Um, basically everything that, that can go uh, wrong in or around a house or anything that has to be maintained. Main, main reason things go wrong is they're simply not maintained. So it's an excellent program for that. And again, if you want to do some of your own repairs, it's an excellent program for that as well. We were watching one of those flip and flop shows. We're just amazed by them. And something that started out as what they thought was cosmetic actually turned into a major repair because somebody had cut through posts which were actually load bearing. So this would be, I, guess, I assume, addressed in this course when not to take out a load bearing wall. Not only will it teach you not to take out a load bearing wall, but it'll, it will explain to you what that load bearing wall is, where they're located, mm -hmm. and how to find if they have been mm -hmm. modified when um, it's often said that once you open up a can of worms, the only thing that you put it into is a bigger can. Mm -hmm. um, you start breaking through drywall or through plaster in a house, and uh, you're going to need that bigger can. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll have the uh, you'll have the knowledge to uh, be able to determine just exactly what size can you need, <laughs> and when it's time to call in the uh, call in the specialist, because sometimes you'll have to do that important to be able to recognize when a, a job is going to be on uh, what you've been what you've been trained to do or what you're capable of doing that's where those uh, that's where those hacked up uh, load bearing walls come from somebody that yes. that that didn't have that knowledge uh, you know oh I can I watch this on television I can go in and do this it doesn't quite work that way in the real world the uh, next field that we're talking about is uh, locksmithing and uh, home security Technician. Now, it's not. Uh, this is not a, a home security engineer. Um, when they talk about a security technician, um, homes today are well. They're not broken into more often than they were before. Even though that would be the the feeling that you get from watching the evening news, you just hear about it more often. But you have valuable things, and you want to secure them. Businesses have valuable things; they want to secure them. Uh, businesses naturally have saves. Many homes have saves, and uh, it's it's uh, a field uh, that that rather goes begging for technicians uh, because it doesn't seem to be a it, you know it's, it's not a glamorous job, but it's a very important job. Uh, again, I mentioned that I work in uh, restaurants, uh, super, super, supervised restaurants, a number of, of restaurant units. Uh, the very first thing that I learned in these uh, businesses was how to uh, repin our high security locks and, and change our uh, combinations because every time you move a management person from one store to another store all of those things had to be done um, that was done through uh, one of our uh, one of our predecessors through uh, international correspondence schools and that's going way back to the late 1970s and early 1980s so this is something we've been doing for a very very long um, course covers the uh, uh, most of the aspects that you need. Uh, it does cover rekeying, covers combination, it, uh, combination keying. Uh, combination uh, is not just a combination lock where you're spinning a dial or or rolling some buttons. Uh, combination also refers to a series of pins that are within a lock that uh, keep it locked when you don't have the key in it. When you put the key in. 
uh, those pins line up in a specific order and uh, allow the cylinder in that lock to be turned, which lets your door lock and unlock. You just put your key in and turn it, and you don't think about it. There's a lot going on in that little piece of brass in your front door, and uh, you're counting on that little piece of brass for a lot. Uh, in the case of the home security, um, again, most homes today, back to our technology, everything is networked, everything is, uh, everything talks to each other. Uh, the lock on your door very well may be electronic. It may not have uh, the standard pins in. It does work the same way, but um, you need to be able to know the difference. You need to be able to retrofit them because a lot of people are going to want to go from the earlier uh, pin lock. Uh, and if, if you're familiar with an earlier pin lock, it's not as secure as you would wish it would be um, to an electronic lock, which of course is far more, far more secure. The last course that uh, we're talking about, uh, this is a this is a, a particular field, and some people are not comfortable uh, with the field. Uh, many of us, however, are. Uh, is our gunsmith uh, program. Uh, firearms have been a part of the uh, country for as long as longer than the country has existed. Um, there are roughly 320 million people in the United States right now. There are at least that many firearms. Uh, those are those are rough estimates. We talk about 320 million guns in the United States. Well, there's 320 million guns that have been uh, given serial numbers since 1968 when it became the law that they had to be numbered. Many firearms before that were not numbered. There may be 500 or 600 million firearms uh, in this country. Um, many people obviously are not capable of working on their own firearms. Very important in the field to be able to uh, not only recognize uh, the style of firearm and the uh, design of the firearm, because a, a firearm is a very complex machine, um, but uh, there are many safety aspects. And uh, the course is heavily, heavily um, involved in uh, the safety aspects. Um, they say that there, there are, are only uh, two kinds of people, those that have had uh, a negligent discharge and those that are going to have a negligent discharge. We're going to try to prevent you from having that. You probably will at some point in your life. Uh, look, hopefully, uh, if, if you're following your training, uh, it's not going to result in the firearm actually uh, discharging because there's not going to be ammunition in it. Um, but we want to know and we you want to be sure that anything that you're working on is safe and accurate. We're going to teach you revolvers and their mechanisms and action. We're going to teach you uh, semi-automatic uh, handguns and rifles. Uh, we do teach the uh, for the semi-automatics, we concentrate uh, fairly heavily on the um, 1911 style uh, pistol. Um, it's, a, it's an easy to understand machine. It's, uh, you know, the design is well over 100 years old. And uh, then the only difference between a, um, you know, a, a semi-automatic and a uh, uh, manually operated firearm is that the recoil, when you squeeze the trigger and uh, the explosion in the, in the round happens, forces a bullet out of the chamber, the recoil uh, of the exploding gases, uh, works a mechanism, removes the old empty shell, and, and puts a new round into the barrel. Um, you'll learn how that works, how to troubleshoot that, how to make sure the uh, uh, round goes to where it's supposed to go uh, in, the, in the barrel. Again, it's a safety aspect. We don't want, a, we don't want a round going too far into the barrel where uh, it doesn't fire. We don't want a round uh, too far back uh, so that when it does fire, some of the gases escape. Uh, you'll learn revolvers, uh, revolver action. Um, we will cover when we're covering the semi-auto, and um, and it, you hear me emphasizing the semi-auto. We do not teach uh, NFA weapons in the course. Uh, NFA is uh, federal regulations from since 1934. Uh, an automatic weapon is a uh, self-firing. You 
squeeze the trigger and as long as your finger is on it, it will fire. It will continue to fire until it runs out of ammunition. Um, mere mortals cannot get those, it's regardless of what you hear on television. If somebody says, oh, he was using an automatic weapon. No, he wasn't using an automatic weapon. In fact, automatic weapons have only been used in murders twice since 1934. And one of those was a police officer using a duty weapon. So we're not going to be covering those. We cover the semi-automatic. Again, it's a tried and true uh, action. It's been around for well over 100 years. The uh, AR-15 platform is covered heavily in the course. Uh, and um, again, that's simply a semi-automatic action. We will cover both actions, which is uh, hand-operated. Uh, if you look at an old... Uh, uh, you know, World War One or World War II uh, movie, for example, and you see a soldier firing his rifle. You see him manipulating a um, piece of metal on the side of that. What he's doing, the same thing that that semi-automatic action is doing, but he's doing it by hand. He pulls it back. It takes out the empty cartridge. He pushes it forward. It puts a new round in, drops it down, and he's ready to fire again. So we will study those. Those are your, and you know, they're, they're deer rifles. They're, they're, Clinkers or any anything that's out there, uh, you know, they can be clinkers. We're going to teach you how to do uh, work on stocks. Uh, you create a stock from scratch. Uh, you can fit a um, factory uh, a factory stock. You can fit a custom stock. Custom stock. Now you can go out and uh, make a custom stock from scratch, and we will teach you how to do the measurements and how to do that, uh, or we'll teach you how to fit a um, factory manufactured uh, stock, which can be custom fit, you know, that comes 90% finished with 90% of the work to do. We'll show you how to do that 90% of the work. Uh, we're going to teach you some ballistics. We're going to teach you a bit about the uh, uh, the powders and the and the rounds. Uh, and again, very thorough course, very well based in safety. Um, there are a number of videos in the course, the very first thing we're going to teach you is how to safely uh, clear a stuck round. That's very often something that you're going to very often run into. And it's not necessarily, when you uh, think of it, it's not necessarily a glamorous job. Um, the thing that the gunsmith is going to do more often than anything else is clean somebody's firearms. People don't want to clean their own guns. And it doesn't sound glamorous, but you can clean a firearm properly and safely for somebody, and they will pay $35 to $50 in most areas of the country for that. You will have maybe a dollar's worth of materials and 15 or 20 minutes of time into that. So it can be a, it can be a very lucrative uh, field. Again, this does not provide the license. We will teach you about the licensing. We will give you hints and, and kinks into, uh, into the licensing process. We will show you how to go about applying for the license. The license comes from the federal government. It's called an FFL, Federal Firearms License. And I do hold an FFL myself. Um, very straightforward process. It's a very, very thorough uh, background check. Uh, but the uh, course is going to provide you with the knowledge and education. It is not going to provide you with the license. That's an important thing to understand about the course. Again, many people take this to uh, work in the field. A lot of people will take this course for themselves and there's a lot of information and it's kind of a fun course. And uh, discover a lot of people go through the course relatively quickly because it is, uh, it is well designed, well put together and uh, it's kind of exciting. Just wanted to put in my two cents about what Bill just said about cleaning weapons. Um, I love to shoot, I've been shooting since I was a little girl and Cleaning your gun makes such a difference in how well it shoots. And if there's a problem on the range, it's usually because the gun hasn't been cleaned in a long time. So just wanted to put in my two cents. Oh, it's absolutely, absolutely mm -hmm. the case. You'll also find that many times when you're repairing damage in a firearms action, it is because of uh, dirt and wear. Uh, they simply haven't been cleaned properly or, or enough. We have a number of uh, what are known as our auto trades courses. Now, you'd think 
that it would be difficult to uh, learn about these trades without actually having a without actually having a a vehicle in front of you. We have in the courses practical exercises that uh, the exercises themselves are optional, um, but they will uh, have you actually do some work if you have the capability of that. And we have work experience options in these courses, so uh, you can get yourself into a shop and begin to do some of these things. That's up to you. We don't require it, but it's certainly recommended. Uh, our auto repair technician course is based on the um, uh, based on the ASC program. It does prepare you for ASC exams. Again, the examinations are administered by an outside agency, uh, but you will be well prepared for those examinations. This again is a book a course that's going to have a textbook in it, along with the online materials or videos in there. There are a number of other uh, options that go with the courses, and we'll discover you know discuss those fairly shortly. Um, very thorough uh, course does cover everything from the basic uh, the basics of the uh, uh, engine and frame design uh, right on up through uh, the electronics and some high performance uh, tuning. Diesel mechanics and heavy truck maintenance in the same vein. Um, in the case of uh, Penn Foster, there are actually many large trucking firms and large rental and leasing companies that uh, have their technicians take our programs uh, specifically. Um, very thorough program, uh, trucks and trailers, chassis, electrical systems, troubleshooting, several different types of diesel uh, engines. Um, very, again, very thorough program, several textbooks in this course in addition to study guides. Again, plenty of video. Uh, also lined up with the uh, ASC examination. Motorcycle repair technician in the same vein. Uh, starts off with the uh, frame and brakes, engines, two cycle, four cycle, uh, covers the material very thoroughly. And uh, most of this particular course is our own material, well designed. Uh, there are experts here that can help you if you have any questions as you go along in your studies. But you'll find that the material is going to cover, cover that material pretty well. The uh, last course that we have here is the small engine repair course. Uh, small engines, they're your lawn, lawn and garden uh, tools, they're your chainsaws, um, there are a number of industrial machines that actually use small engines. Um, you'll be capable of uh, working on small tractors, uh, generator sets, uh, etc. A very thorough program here as well. Uh, we will provide a carburetor for you to get your fingers in and see what, uh, what one of the carbs look like. Many small engines still use carburetors rather than fuel injection. Again, Thorough program experts here that can help you with that at any given point in time. Um, and anything from a hobby right on up to a full-fledged career can be made from this. All of these courses are mapped to, uh, uh, to uh, industry standards and certifications. We have, again, the ASC certifications, um, the EPA certification we mentioned uh, for the HVAC. Now that covers the 608, which is the regular gas. It does not cover 609, which is the automotive, but that can be taken online uh, if you choose to. Uh, electrical courses are based to the NEC. All of our uh, technical programs allow you to use the Snap-on Excellence Program, which is a discount program that allows you to buy Snap-on tools at a discount. That's done through Snap-on. We help you hook up with them. Uh, there, are, there will be links and explanations of, of how to hook up with them on our websites. Uh, Again, there are practical exercises and uh, videos. Uh, most of our courses also have thorough web re uh, resources that you can get at, and again, live instructors. In addition to our technical and trade programs, we call them career and diploma programs, we do have degree programs. These degree programs are four semester programs they're much fuller and add so many more general ed courses. And one of the really good things is, for example, if you take our office course and then enroll in the computer information systems or some of the other programs, those lessons, we will transfer the grades over so you won't have to take them again. Yeah, our engineering uh, technology degree programs, uh, there are several uh, discipline-specific tracks 
Uh, there are uh, electrical, yeah, electronics and electrical maintenance. Uh, there are mechanical. Uh, there are industrial. And uh, you pick and choose four elements for the discipline that you're more you're, that you're most uh, interested in. So if you're looking at civil, if you're looking at mechanical, if you're looking at industrial engineering, uh, you have the capability of picking and choosing the uh, the detailed heavy courses that uh, uh, that you would need to give you that particular information. That's a really good point. I'd like to pop in again. Uh, computer information systems. There are core courses that you have to take. There are general ed courses that you have to take. In the last semester, we have a whole list of electives, and you can choose those whatever electives based on your desires and interests. Now we did mention, um, sorry about that. <laughs> um, we did mention the um, uh, access database before. In the computer information systems, there's also some touching on the uh, MySQL from Microsoft, and uh, in the fourth semester, should you choose to take it, there is uh, training in the Oracle database program. Um, well, thank you very much for attending. And is there anybody out there who has any questions for us? No? Okay. Well, okay, and if you want to, and want to enroll in any of these courses, Grab your phone, give us a call. It's 1-800-239-3916. That's 1-800-239-3916. And there are admission specialists who can fill you in on the individual programs. If you have a uh, detailed question, they can actually refer a question on to an instructor. Um, you know, you don't have to be a student yet to ask us a question um, before you uh, enroll in a program. You, you wonder, do we cover something? Certainly contact us, we'd be happy to help you.